Hello, I'm Angelie Velasquez, and welcome to This Weekend Review for June 22nd, 2012 on Green Oops TV. Our project of the week is the Sam Nunn Atlanta Federal Center, built in 2010 in Atlanta, Georgia. The former site of Atlanta's most popular retailer throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, the iconic Riches Department Store, the present Sam Nunn Atlanta Federal Center serves as the home of several federal agencies and is one of the city's most environmentally friendly facilities. The high-rise building of the center houses a forested courtyard with a stand of approximately 50 maple trees, flowering cherry trees, and various other deciduous species, as well as native drought-resistant vegetation and paths of semi-pervious concrete pavers. Utilizing American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funds, the $2.6 million project renovation's goals, consistent with the General Services Administration's roofing program, were to provide thermal and moisture protection, conserve energy in the environment, reduce utility costs, and help attain energy security by meeting energy independence and Security Act requirements. In 2011, the Sam Nunn Atlanta Federal Center received the inaugural Roof Point Award from the Center of Environmental Innovation in Roofing for Excellence in Life Cycle Management, distinguished by its efficient reuse of original roofing materials, and it has received other awards too. The two vegetated roofs are beautiful highlights of the buildings with more than 198,000 colorful sedums, delospermas, native cacti, alliums, and more from Saul Nurseries. They were planted three plugs per square foot and are set in four inches of growing media from It's All Natural in a planting plan designed by Tremco Roofing's Marianne Ullman. To learn more about the Sam Nunn Atlanta Federal Center, click on our Project of the Week photo on our homepage. Watch the Green Herbs and Walls of the World Virtual Summit 2011, Episode 28, The Green Bronx Machine, presentation by Steve Ritz. Industry News, a three-bill package sponsored by New Jersey Assembly Democrats Ruben Ramos Jr., John McKeon, Wayne D'Angelo, and Connie Wagner, which is designed to encourage the proliferation of environmentally friendly buildings, has been approved. Over at Sky Gardens, check out Linda's latest posts. Green News and Walls of the World Virtual Summit 2011, Episode 28, The Green Bronx Machine, Green Roofed Sam Nunn Federal Center Dedicated in Atlanta, and GreenRoofs.com's This Week in Review on Green Roofs TV for June 15, 2012. June 24th through the 27th is the Western Roofing Expo 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Charles A. Birnbaum of the Huffington Post talks about the real Highline effect, a transformational triumph of preservation and design. New York's Highline, the stretch of abandoned elevated railroad on New York's west side that has been transformed into a public park and one of the city's most popular destinations, has generated a lot of buzz about the so-called Highline effect. Several cities are looking at their own forgotten areas, trying to figure out how they too can transform them into environmentally friendly spaces. The Highline was made possible by a team of landscape architects architects, horticulturalists, engineers, and others, led by James Corner Field Operations, and they were able to keep historic preservation and design. By the way, the Highline isn't the only successful adaptive reuse approach that works. San Francisco's Chrissy Field was an asphalt airfield and now is a must-go-to destination that connects San Franciscans with their industrial waterfront heritage while restoring and conserving its natural and ecological values. Other projects include the 36-acre Point State Park in Pittsburgh, Tampa's Net Nations Bark Plaza, designed in the 1980s by Dan Kiley and now known as Kiley Garden, and Philip Johnson's Water Garden in Fort Worth, Texas. Landscape architect Loria Lynn suggests that when thinking about changes to an urban landscape that has a history, the conversation should address what stays and what goes, and the virtues of bringing something new or an addition to an existing site. Rachel Neuer of Ecoimagination.com says, Eating on a green roof, New York buildings provide food, habitat for wildlife. She says New York's green roofs do more than add a splash of green to the urban habitat. They also provide a crucial stopping ground and habitat for birds flying through. Researcher Dustin Partridge tracks the insect life on roofs throughout New York to see if the roofs are providing food sources for the birds. The author visited Partridge on one of his roofs and put together a great video on the full article about the studies he's conducting on New York's green roofs. 
He talks about the visiting birds and what wildlife benefits green roofs provide and compares the data he received with traditional black roofs. To learn more about these stories and new ones posted daily, go to our In the News or News Link section of our website. Send us your green articles, videos, and images to editor at greenroofs.com and share your green roof or green wall info with the world. Make sure to keep up with everything greenroofs.com by following us on Twitter, liking us on Facebook, being a member of our network on LinkedIn, and subscribing to our Green Roofs TV channel on YouTube. This has been This Week in Review for June 22nd, 2012 on Green Roofs TV. I'm Angelie Velasquez, and I'll see you next week. This week's episode is sponsored by the Green Roof Directory. Brought to you by Greenroofs.com.